Thanks, Olivia. It looks like you guys are having a ton of fun over there. So I'm Sarah. I'm the founder and CCO of SheFit, and I'm so excited to be talking to one of our SheFit ambassadors today. Um, you know, we're sharing stories of all sorts of different walks of life, and Chandra's story is is probably one of my favorites, to be honest. Uh -huh. There's so much that she has to share, and she's an open book. The one thing that I was telling um, the girls earlier as I was talking about you and that I admire and that we all admire about you is just the fact that you are so vocal mm -hmm. and open about topics that I think most women yeah. shy away from sure. or like are scared to talk about mm -hmm. or are embarrassed yep. and you don't and no. so tell us how it's so easy for you to be vocal about this because it's it's it's, it's hard like I've talked a little bit about just rough stuff in my childhood having um, like an emotionally abusive parent so I think it was subconscious for most of my life through my childhood. I was never overweight as a child. I wasn't even really overweight as a teenager, like a little, you know, teenage pudge. But sure. um, it was not until my 20s. Uh, my husband and I have been together since we were teenagers. And so we moved out together, um, like when I turned 18. Mm -hmm. And I was totally normal weight at 17, 18 years old. Um, and then I gained like 100 plus pounds in my 20s. And I think that's when the effect of all that stuff from childhood like really impacted me. It was like I didn't know how to, I was terrified of everything. I didn't, I was afraid to talk to anyone on the phone. I was afraid to go, you know, talk to the lady in the gas station. Mm -hmm. Like I was just afraid I would look stupid or make a mistake or someone would talk about me behind my back or, mm -hmm. uh, or to my face, whatever. I was just terrified of everything. And I, I think that's where the bad relationship with food started. It was mm -hmm. a way for me to, I don't think I was aware that I was doing it, but subconsciously it was like, if I just, you know, surround myself with fat, um, I, people won't pay attention to me, I'll be insignificant, um, and I'll have this protection, you know, sure. barrier around me, literally separating me from everyone else in the world. So mm -hmm. when I started to really confront all those issues head on, it's when I was able to start tackling things. Mm -hmm. But I just find that, first of all, extraordinary things happen when you step outside your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And secondly, that there's so much power in communication and mm -hmm. connecting with other people. So mm -hmm. I feel like I've mostly had positive feedback mm -hmm. from sharing you know, my mm -hmm. stories, whether it be something really amazing or really vulnerable or something really terrible. There, are, mm -hmm. People just come out of the woodwork to say, mm -hmm. uh, I totally connect to it. Yeah. or you know, thank you for sharing that. I don't feel yeah. alone, like whatever it might be. So, I mean, you know, the first time I posted like a photo of my wrinkled belly, I was super nervous, but <sighs> yeah. there's power in that and it so takes much. away all the stigma and it takes away the fear and addressing those issues to begin with were the catalyst for change. So I always say it wasn't um, losing the weight that gave me self-esteem. It was learning to love myself that made me able to lose weight. Yep. And then in sharing those stories in the beginning, like I said before, it just empowered me to continue to share vulnerable stuff, which it's like a circle, you know, then I heal more, share more. Yeah. What was the jump starter? What was the kicker into, okay, I am, I'm going down this path. It was more just a not paying attention mm -hmm. kind of thing and just not really caring about yeah. myself or my health or, sure. um, but there was about a year period before I finally decided, decided to, you tackle it. Um, I just had a series of just like really terrible things that happened mm -hmm. in regards to my weight. Like I had gone on um, a talk show, like I went into the audience of a talk show that I'd waited years to go into and um, they had sat us in the front just based on where we were in line and we ended up getting moved to like a back corner and I was just convinced that they were like, well, we can't put, you know, the fat girl in the front row. So, like, I was convinced that's why they moved me. Who knows if that's true, but... That's what you were telling It stuck in my head, and yeah. I was like, this great yeah. experience is ruined by sure. my fatness. That's sure. what I felt like. And then, like, I had to be taken off a roller coaster because they couldn't, you know, click the thing shut. And mm -hmm. just, there was, like, a couple things like mm -hmm. that that happened in a short period of time that just, like, broke me. Yeah. Um, and my husband and I 
after not ever really knowing for sure if we wanted to have kids, kind of decided that was what we wanted to do mm -hmm. um, or we wanted to try. And I just, I don't know, I have this realization that I can't, I can't, I can't let this continue. Mm -hmm. I can't teach my children this mm -hmm. way. I, this isn't the life that mm -hmm. we want to live. Mm -hmm. I don't want to miss out anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't want to feel, I wanted to have like a healthy pregnancy yeah. and a healthy labor and yeah. all of that stuff. So I don't know what it was about it, but I stepped on the scale one day and the number was closer to 300 than 200. And that number was just like, like in your face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just, I just thought not one more pound. No. Like, not one more pound. Just we, had done. Yeah. Fed we up. have to stop. Mm -hmm. My original goal always was to lose a hundred pounds. Just, I knew that I could lose that much yep. easily. Yeah. Um, I knew I had been that weight previously yep. at some point. Um, so that was just, I was like, hey, why not 100? That sounds like a good round number. It's just, and you did. Um, I've actually lost a little more, so it's, it's at 111. Oh, I just seriously. Now that I'm counting. Amazing. Um, how did you come to find SheFit? Because you you didn't know about it before. No. So how did you come well, across SheFit? So, I mean, I had actually heard of SheFit because of like Shark Tank and things like that. Okay. Um, but I'm notoriously a crappy gym clothes wearer. <laughs> So I had just been wearing old junk forever, which I was like, you know what, it's fine, it's working, right. whatever. So many of us do that too, like it's yeah. fine, it's doing what it needs to do, whatever. It's good, I don't, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, a friend of mine, Janelle Pfeiffer, who... Um, we love Janelle. Yes, so she carries the BRCA gene and she had like a preemptive um, double mastectomy. So she was like recommended this bra by her doctor for starters, so mm -hmm. she had bought one and then she was raving about it, and then you guys actually <laughs> sent her one also, um, and she was like, I have two of them. Oh, I love that. So she gave me like her first one to wear. She's like, just wear it mm -hmm. on a run, and her and I were training for runs at that time together, so we, we both went out in them, and I was like, okay, I'm converted. <laughs> this bra is amazing. Oh. Um, and I've, you know, I complained for the last couple of years how all the extra skin and everything after weight loss mm -hmm. uh, just makes it hard to find clothes that fit, especially when running, so mm -hmm. the bra, I mean, my old crappy bra just puts it to shame. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's so great. Like, if you could share just one, one oh piece gosh. of advice or just a Ooh. word of inspiration, just what would, what would it um, be? Like, you have no idea what you're capable of. Um, it's so far beyond what you, could, what you imagine that you're capable of. So even if you, even if you can't see it, if you, if you can't imagine it, you don't know how you'll get there, you have no idea what first step to take, um, just start like right today mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. don't wait till Monday don't wait till someone helps you don't wait until you've got a couple things figured out just take a step today right now that is in that direction and you'll figure it out along the way and you can totally do it everyone can do it like I'm just a regular girl from a small town that is not any different than anyone else that's such a great piece of advice. So, Shandra, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your story. Thank you it's for just, me. it's it's moving, it's inspiring, and I I know that you inspired or motivated someone out there today, and we just thank you for that. I can't wait to have you back. Thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. So, Olivia, back over to you.